Today we're going to go through every menu item the transform tool has to offer, starting with position and scale. But before any of that, we first need to find the transform effect. You can do that by going into your effects tab, searching up transform, and clicking and dragging it onto your clip. Position refers to the X and Y, or up and down, location of the object. You can change it by clicking and dragging on the corresponding numbers, or by entering your own special number. Scale refers to an object size, whether it's big or small. You can change this the same way as position, either by clicking and dragging on a number, or by entering your own. If you want to make something wide, or something tall, then uncheck uniform scale to affect the height and the width separately. Rotation is measured in 360 degrees, like a circle. So, imagine a circle around your object and rotate accordingly. When I'm using the transform tool, 9 times out of 10 it's for position, scale, or rotation. Which is cool and all, but at the moment it's just standing still. There's no motion to it. To do that, we'll need to add keyframes. Keyframes are essential to movement. When it comes to adding a keyframe in the transform tool, you can start by clicking the stopwatch button. Anytime you add a keyframe after that, you can use this diamond button over here. Adding a keyframe to an object at frame 1 is telling Premiere Pro that's its starting point. Adding another at frame 24 is telling it that's its ending point. If you change something about the object at the end, Premiere Pro will interpolate those two changes between them and give it motion. That's pretty cool. If you want a less linear feeling movement, you can change the keyframe speed graph. Either way, the object will go from point A to point B in one second, but what happens between that is determined by this graph. To get to this graph, click the arrows right next to the keyframes you want to affect. Then you can click these blue points. Dragging these points inward will increase the height of the graph, which speeds up the animation in the middle and slows it down at the ends, which makes it much, much smoother. So it's like super bright in here. This speed ramping technique applies to all other aspects of the transform tool. That's really the main use the transform tool has to offer, moving objects around like that. But there are also more advanced effects, like ski- Santa's coming to town. Let's say you're a human who was accidentally kidnapped by Santa in the late 70s. Now it's the early 90s and you've realized you're not an elf like everyone else at the North Pole. You probably look something like this. I don't always find myself in that elf situation, but if you do, you can use the skew effect to change the skew angle and skew amount to make weird frames and even weirder animations. <laughs> hey Optimus Prime knockoff. This transform stuff is cool and all, but I just can't figure out how to segue into the sponsorship. Why don't you listen to some music for inspiration? Wanna get a copyright claim for using this song on YouTube? <laughs> I'm a space robot. I don't know what copyright is. But I do know that Lyft has over 1.4 million mainstream and royalty-free tracks that you can use in your YouTube videos without worrying about being copyright claimed. What? Like, sounds incredible. Don't interrupt me. I want to listen to Sabrina Carpenter. I'm working late. You can do that? Yes. Use the link in the description to sign up for a subscription with Lit today. You can find hundreds of mainstream artists whose music you can use in your videos without worrying about getting copyright claims. Thanks, Optimus Prime knockoff. Anytime, buddy. Now, if only I could find a way to segue into the sponsorship. Shut up. Capacity affects how full a layer appears. 100% is fully there, 50 is halfway, and 0% is completely invisible. Now you may have noticed that I skipped over anchor point at the very beginning, and that's because you first need to understand how to use every other part of the transform tool. Now when you load any object into Premiere, like this guy, you're going to notice that the anchor point is directly in its center. This means whatever transformative move you make to him is going to be based on that point in the center. For instance, rotation. But if we were to move that point, let's say farther down, then it would look something like this. And the same goes for scale too. Wherever you put the new anchor point is going to determine where the center of the object's resizing comes from. This same idea applies to the position control too. And at the end of the day, the anchor point tool really just acts as another axis to base your movements off of. And to wrap it all up, Shutter angle describes how much motion blur an object has between keyframes. A real life example of this would be increasing or decreasing your camera shutter to get a choppy motion or a smooth motion, with the higher shutter speed equaling more motion blur and a lower being less. Just keep in mind that increasing the shutter angle might be a little more taxing on your computer, but it looks nice, so 
do it. And with that, you now know everything you need to know about the Transform Tool in Premiere Pro. I just want to say thanks again to Licked for sponsoring this video. It's my first ever sponsor, so thank you very much. They offer a genuinely amazing service to content creators, and if you couldn't tell by this video, I use them all the time. So if you have a YouTube channel and you want access to amazing music, click the link below, go check them out, it'll help me out, and yeah, thanks for watching.